Hello, my name is Dr. Shell Amat, and I would like to introduce you to an interesting case that I treated in the How Would You Treat This Malocclusion section of the PCSO quarterly publication. I treated this case under the supervision of Dr. Sneha Oberoi while I was in residency at the University of California, San Francisco. Currently, I've graduated and practice at UC San Francisco and also in the Monterey Peninsula. Patient JG is an eight-year, two-month-old Latino-American male without a chief complaint. However, his father is concerned about his lower front teeth sticking out, indicating his mandibular right, central, and lateral incisors. JG is himself extremely positive, happy, and easygoing. Cooperation is expected, although his mental development is delayed for his age. He does not have any significant medical or dental contraindications in his history for orthodontic and craniofacial orthopedic therapy. He is generally healthy with right-sided hemifacial microsomia and no history of trauma to his face or teeth. Regular dental care is provided in a safety net clinic. He has no caries and no restorative experience. Analysis of the patient's frontal facial relaxed photograph reveals severely asymmetric upper, middle, and lower facial thirds with a decreased lower facial height. His relaxed profile photograph shows his concave lower facial pattern with an obtuse nasolabial angle, a deep mental labial fold, and an everted lower lip. His maxillary lip position lies one millimeter behind the E-line. His smile reveals maxillary incisors undergoing eruption, and his lower right incisors and deciduous canines are prominent when he smiles. His maxillary dental midline is 1 mm to the right of the facial midline, while his mandibular dental midline is 7 mm to the right of the facial midline. Moreover, he has a moderate cant of the occlusal plane, with a right side more superior. He also displays a muscle imbalance, with the left masseter muscle larger on, the, on that side and a left-sided facial fullness. He has no parafunctional habits, and the results of a temporomandibular joint exam are within normal limits, but he does have a significant facial asymmetry. When this smile is evaluated from his profile, it can be seen that the upper incisor is 3 millimeters behind the soft tissue glabella. Interorally, his dental stage is DS1-M0. He has an overbite of more than 100% and an anterior crossbite of the lower right permanent central and lateral incisor and deciduous canine. His mandibular dental midline is 6 millimeters to the right of the maxillary. His closing path shows a 2 millimeter CRCO shift to the right. His periodontal condition shows a level of attachment that is high on the crowns consistent with erupting teeth. His maxillary midline frenum is strong and low, but minimum alveolar development has occurred at this point, and development will be monitored. His oral hygiene is fair. His buccal occlusion shows a bilateral flush terminal plane interdigitation. He has minus 2 millimeters of overjet for the anterior teeth that are in crossbite. His occlusal photographs reveal a maxillary arch form that is asymmetrically skewed, However, he does have adequate arch length sufficient for eruption of the succedaneous teeth. His mandibular arch form is asymmetrically parabolic on the left and omega-shaped on the right, with an arch deficiency of 3 mm. The curve of SPI is moderate in the mandible and maxilla. His constructed panoramic radiograph shows that both condyles are present, although shorter on the right side. The glenoid fossae and coronoid processes are present bilaterally indicating a type 1 form of hemifacial microsomia. TMJ tomography slices reveal symmetric TMJ space bilaterally, although the left condyle appears taller and broader than the right. The lateral cephalogram shows that the patient has an increased sagittal jaw relationship due to a retronathic mandible with compensatory dentoalveolar movements. Vertically, he shows a decreased skeletal discrepancy due to a hypodivergent mandible and compensatory dentoalveolar movements. His airway appears patent with large palatine tonsils. His posterior anterior cephalogram suggests that the maxillary transverse width is sufficient and his right mandibular condylar neck appears thinner than his left. There is a transverse jaw discrepancy with the mandible shifted to the right of the maxilla. 
His cervical vertebral morphology indicates that he is at stage of maturation CVS2 with a high growth potential. In summary, our diagnosis is that he has type 1 hemifacial microsomia with resulting archform disharmony and dental compensation. Although there are many appropriate ways of approaching treating this malocclusion, there were four main options that we were considering on the onset. We're interested to hear what you think and what has worked well for you when approached with this malocclusion. Treatment options include, but are not limited to, option one. A bionator with a constructed bite to align mandibular midline to maxillary midline and promote differential growth of the mandibular condyles to improve facial harmony. Option two. Additive occlusal equilibration with composite bonded to the deciduous posterior teeth to guide the mandible into a constructed bite with midline centered, aiming to promote differential condylar growth and to improve skeletal symmetry. Option three, upper and lower two by four appliances, posterior cross bite elastics to shift jaw to the left. Option four, wait until growth is complete, followed by full fixed appliances to coordinate the arches and probable two jaw surgery to improve skeletal symmetry. And of course, we have a fifth option, which is no treatment.